Right then, this is my third and final video on my, my short sequence for GCSE um, computing in terms of memory. And what I want to talk about, as you can see, is a bit more about RAM and also some stuff about flash memory. Now in the first two videos I've talked quite a lot about RAM, and I've used this stick quite a lot. One of the things I haven't said is how the amount of RAM actually changes the performance of your computer system. So let's pretend for a second, I've got, I've got a computer, it's got two gigabytes of RAM, and it's also got a bit of cache memory on the processor, and it's also got a bit of virtual memory on the hard drive, and we've talked about those in the first video. Then, and, and I've got to run the latest computer game, you know, COD 8 or something, or I'm doing some video editing, I'm doing some rendering, something that takes, that takes a lot of power out of the computer and takes a lot of work. There's a lot of instructions and a lot of data. Well, my cache memory is really, really small, so that's going to get used up really quick. It's really fast memory, but it's going to get used up and I'm going to run out of space very, very quickly. So I go to my main memory, which is where most things will land in terms of the programs and the data, and I fill that up pretty quickly because two gigabytes these days isn't very big. And I fill it up fairly quickly, and so I have to start using my virtual memory, which is really, really slow because it's got physical components and it's much phys physically much further away from the processor than these two. Okay, so my computer system is going to start to slow down once I start to run out of main memory. The instructions will take longer to execute because to go and get them takes a lot longer. The data will take a longer to process because, again, it takes longer for me to go and get the data and then go and store it somewhere and write down the answer to the equation I've just done. Um, and so my computer's running a bit slow. So what I could do is I could get some more RAM. I haven't got any more sticks to put in. But I could upgrade my, my computer to 8 gigabytes of RAM. I've now got four times as much storage. Importantly, I haven't got four times... I haven't got a computer that's four times quicker. It doesn't work like that. But what it means is I can put four times more data in here before I run out of space. And so I have to use rely less on my virtual memory and so when I'm running my game, it's a lot more likely I'll be able to store all the instructions I need and all the data I need on here so it'll be accessed quickly rather than having to put some of it on here and having all the rest up here, which is really, really slow and really, really far away. So increasing the amount of RAM allows me to have more programs in data, so it allows me to have more programs in memory, it allows me to have more data in memory, and it allows me therefore to execute instructions um, more efficiently because I can get them more quickly. Okay? And, and that's why increasing the amount of memory in your system is a really, really useful thing to do. It's not that it makes your processor quicker, it's not that it makes your computer necessarily quicker, it's that it means it can store more data in main memory and so it can more quickly fetch the kind of instructions and data that you need to get access to frequently as you're running your programs and executing instructions on your data. Okay, so that's a bit about kind of the performance of main memory. All right, so far we've talked about five different types. No, we haven't. We've talked about four different types of memory. We need to talk about a fifth one, okay? We've talked about ROM. We've talked about your main memory. We've talked about your cache memory. We've talked about your virtual memory. My handwriting is getting worse. I'm going to rub those two out and write them again because my handwriting is getting worse. So we've got cache memory. Uh, we've got main memory, we've got virtual memory, we've got ROM, read-only memory, and we've also got flash memory. Okay? And your cache in your main memory, which are this thing and this thing, okay? They're really, really good at storing data temporarily and all the rest of it, and they're really quick, and there are no moving parts, so they can't wear out. They, they do actually wear out in a slightly different way, but there are no physical parts to fail. Um, but when you turn the power off, you lose whatever's in there, okay? So these two things here are volatile. And by volatile, what we mean is when you turn the power off, the data gets wiped, gone, empty, finished with. On the other hand, you've got these two. You've got a memory card from a digital camera or a video camera or a, a mobile phone. For mobile phones, are a bit smaller, but you get the idea. You're presumably familiar with these. And you've also got a USB stick. Okay, and for both of these, what you've got inside the casing is you've got space for some chips for, for some memory, which is a lot like RAM. It works in a very similar way to RAM. And then you've got your contacts or your USB socket um, that have allowed for the data transfer. But these are non-volatile. 
okay, and your ROM is also non-volatile. And that means when you turn the power off, you don't lose anything, it's still there, it's still stored on there. So I can take this card out of my digital camera, and the pictures are still on it. They haven't disappeared, they're, they're not lost. And if I put it back in my camera, I can get the pictures back on my camera, I can put it in my computer to get the pictures off there. Likewise, you know, a USB stick would be no good if it lost everything the minute you unplugged it. So it works just like RAM. There are no moving parts, which means it's quick. Okay, the advantage of flash memory is it's quick. There are no moving parts. It's non-volatile. It really is the best of everything. It really is the best of everything. Um, and so you, it's really handy if you want to copy some files it's much quicker to stick a USB pen in than it is to, to burn it to a CD or even write it to, to a physical hard drive you know these are really really handy devices and in fact as well as being used for you know kind of short term storage for things like swapping files from one computer to another for storing digital photos before you transfer them onto your computer and things like that we're also starting to see now some flash hard drives so instead of the big clunky hard drive with the moving parts that spin up and it's quite slow you can have a flash hard drive um, or solid state hard drive they're called and you get similar kinds of storage level not quite as big um, but you get quite a lot of storage, certainly more than you get on a memory card. And you get no moving parts, so it's, it's more reliable in terms of hardware failures. You can drop it without being worried about breaking it, stuff like that. Um, not that you should try and drop it, but you know it's more resistant to that kind of thing. Um, and it's really, really quick, so your computer will load faster, your programs will run faster, your files will save faster, and so on. The only problem with flash hard drives, with solid state hard drives, is they are still pretty expensive. Um, they're still quite expensive to buy, much more expensive than traditional hard drives. Okay, um, And that's one of the main ways that things are changing with computers at the minute, is a lot of machines now actually, they have two hard drives, they have a, a physical, uh, physical, they have uh, this kind of hard drive, a traditional hard drive, and they also have a solid state hard drive side by side, and you put your operating system on one, and you put your files on another, and so your operating system and maybe your most commonly used programs run really, really quickly, and then your files are a bit slower, but that's fine, that's not really where the problem usually lies. And you get a, a faster running computer with a small hard drive for your programs and a big hard drive for your files. And, and that works really, really well. And it's kind of you're sharing the cost a little bit. Um, and there we go. So we've talked now over the three videos, I've talked over the three videos, about five main types of memory. Um, we've talked about ROM versus RAM, or main memory and the fact that ROM is non-volatile, it's very small start of instructions. Main memory is much bigger and it's typically used for currently running programs, currently used data. Your cache memory is essentially main memory but very small and actually placed on the chip itself, on the processor, so it can be accessed really, really quickly. Your virtual memory is a bit like RAM, it's a hard drive, so it's pretending to be RAM, and it's much, much slower. It's not very good at its job, but there's loads of space, so it can be quite handy. And then we've talked about flash memory, which is your non-volatile, solid state, no moving parts, storage, short-term storage, for things like files transferring to another computer, for digital photos, things like that. And that is pretty much everything you need to know about memory. There's a lot of detail there. As always, what you need to do if you're revising right now is you need to go get yourself a past paper from some websites and try answering it. Try the example, try OCR's website, try AQA's website, find some past papers, have a go at filling them in, answering questions on memory, but all the information you should need should be on those three videos.